Capes on the Couch podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Dr. Issues is a psychiatrist, but he is not your psychiatrist and does not have knowledge of your individual situation. For any personal mental health concerns, please consult your own health care providers. For medical emergencies, please call 911 or the designated number in your area immediately. Remember that you are not alone and help is out there. Hello and welcome to Capes on the Couch, where comics get counseling. I'm Anthony Sitko. And I'm Dr. Issues. This is issue number 85. Our present level patron, Ruby, has requested Raphael from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a, uh, a favorite franchise of mine, as, as I think uh, is the same for Doc as well from our childhoods. Yep. I was, uh, I was always a Donatello fan myself, being the nerd and the science guy, but I, I respect Raph. Yeah, I respect him too. My favorite, I would say, more Michelangelo, only because I, I always felt he was uh, the most chill out of all of them. I would have pegged you for a Leo guy. Nah. I, I mean, see, once we start ranking turtles like this, it makes it sound like whoever you don't pick, you don't like. That's not what I'm getting at. It's just, uh, I I respect all of them. Don it. Okay, let's just do it. Let's just get this out of the way. Ranking. <laughs> So for me, it's Michelangelo, Donatello, Leonardo, Raphael. Oh my God, I'm going to get my butt kicked. <sighs> no, I, I listen. For me, it's you're gonna you're gonna laugh. Then it's Donnie, Leo, Raph, Mikey. Okay. Okay. Not a problem, man. <laughs> and then way way down after like Baxter Stockman and. <laughs> Usagi Ujimbo and Leatherhead is Venus de Milo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, as oh, on one of the cartoon iterations, my daughter was watching. Uh, it was a Usagi Ujimbo episode, and I made her stop flipping through channels. and And she's like, "What's the problem?" I said, "It's not a problem. It's a solution." <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we'll get to Usagi Ujimbo one of these days. I wouldn't have any complaints about that. So, first off, very big news. We have a brand new mayor level patron, Amy, who comes all the way from the UK. So, thank you so much, Amy, uh, for joining the rank of our awesome patrons as we continue to grow our small but dedicated band of faithful fanatics. We still don't have a name for them, though. Like, somebody suggested one a while ago i think ruby had an idea or ariel had a suggestion but i damned if i can remember what it is but we need a good name for our fan base but uh in any case thank you so much amy for your subscription to our patron our patreon we have lots of exclusive content there that you can check out if you want to be cool like amy you can go to patreon.com slash capes on the couch and subscribe there are still several slots available amy did mention that uh she wants she's calling dibs on any of the president level spots that may open up she wants to be notified immediately so nice. i don't know if i don't know if our presidents are going anywhere anytime soon though and we're, and we're certainly glad to have everybody available. Um, I've been trying to figure out a way to, to expand the, the Patreon a little bit, maybe come up with some additional roles, some additional things, but we'll, we'll see what happens. There may, may be some, some big stuff coming down the pike for the show. We're not, uh, we're not quite at liberty to discuss that just yet, but uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned. We're, we're, we're very excited about some things. Oh, yeah. And if they, if they pan out, knock wood then uh, then we're going to be very excited. And of course, I just jinxed myself with uh, <laughs> by opening my mouth. Side note, and this also segues into the shout out of the week that Amy discovered us through Jay and Miles Explained the X-Men, which is a, a hilarious podcast. The title is sort of self-explanatory. Jay and Miles cover X-Men comics and they go through story arcs they cover characters they go through relationships they break it down they do deep dives like we sort of skim the surface so we can get to the the psychological issues they go deep like issue by issue panel by panel breakdown sometimes they they really dive into the meat of these characters and amy said well i think you guys would be ripe for a crossover so jay and miles if you're listening you're interested, 
let us know. Uh, right now, they are covering X Men and uh, Earth Two Ninety Five. So if you go to explainthexmen.com, uh, explainthexmen.com, no dashes, you can check out their all of their episodes. They're close to three hundred, I think, at this point. So Sweet. they've been doing this quite a bit longer than we have, but it's good stuff. So this being our third. Uh, journey into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle universe. I'm not going to belabor the points too much. We're just going to dive right into the background. So Raphael, unless you've been living under a rock for the past 30 years, uh, you are familiar with the Ninja Turtles for Turtles Mutated by Ooze. Raphael, created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, May 1984. In the comics and in basically every major iteration of the comics that we uh, have seen, both in uh, not just the comics, but even cartoons, live action, movies, TV shows, what have you, Raphael is second in command. He is the, the angry one. Uh, Leonardo being the leader, unless you are listening to the lyrics to Turtle Power, in which Raphael is the leader of the group transformed from the norm by the nuclear goop, <laughs> which I never I never got that, and I always disagreed. Side note, by the way, if you want to hear me spit the first verse to that song, uh, go to the live stream, or if you're a patron, it'll definitely make the blooper reel. And um, so in the original Mirage comics, Raphael is the angriest, and he's the, the most violent one on the team which is saying something on a team of four ninja turtles. He's the violent one. So he really sort of, what's the word I'm looking for? Blanches, I suppose, against Leonardo's leadership. But he eventually comes to understand that Leo's composure makes him the more effective leader, even if Raph is the more passionate one, put it mildly. So in uh, some of the later Mirage stories, Raphael becomes mutated into a dinosaur-like creature after being attacked by a vampire because comics. Then uh, in the Image Comics run, he becomes disfigured after he gets blasted in the face and then he ends up wearing a mask not unlike Casey Jones. And you can go back and listen to our Casey Jones episode. And uh, so he wears a mask to cover his eye. I think it's his left eye is is the one that gets damaged. And then at one point, he takes on the mantle of the Shredder. And you can listen to our Shredder episode, which wasn't that long ago, because Raphael takes over the Foot Clan during an ongoing fight against the mob. Then in the IDW stories, uh, which is a little bit, they, they tweak the origin story, which I thought was kind of interesting. After the mutation, he gets separated from his brothers and he's living on the street for a while. And unbeknownst to him, his brothers are all looking for him, but he doesn't know that. And then he helps rescue Casey Jones from his abusive father. And then they become friends for a while. And then he does reunite with his brothers and he trains under them or he trains under Splinter alongside of them. But he's very quick to estrange himself from them uh, during difficult times. And uh, there's there's numerous stories and we don't have the, the time nor the energy to get into all of them because, again, that's not this kind, you know, this isn't that kind of a show. But there's some some major through points that happened throughout all of this and we're going to get into the issues right now. And so I think the first thing and one of the things that basically every iteration discusses, whether it's the cartoons, uh, certainly in some of the more recent cartoons, and even going back to the live action movie, I still I still love that original 1988, 1990 uh, live action movie. That is just it's it's a thing of beauty, and it's Raphael's rivalry with Leonardo over leadership, and it's the notion that Raph doesn't think that Leo should be the one in charge. And this was also done, I might add, very very well in the TMNT. CGI movie from like 2008, 2009, mm. whenever that was. Okay. I'm circling the drain here at this point. So I'm going to stop talking and say, Doc, Raph doesn't like that Leo is the leader. How does that affect his membership as a member on the team, as well as a brother? So I'm going to reference the Shredder episode right off the bat where Leonardo also came up. And that was begrudging respect 
but you know that you're not on the same page. So I use the term frenemy. So I don't know if there's a way to rearrange the words and and kind of come up with, well, no, not really. You don't have to. It's sibling rivalry. The idea that you have the perfect opportunity in a relatively small group. That's key to this. We're not talking a humongous organization. We're talking a, a very close-knit group of people where one person is going to be considered the one to be the face, the, the person that runs the show. And in theory, if everybody had the exact same ambitions, you would have that almost like a 25% split and it, it would always bounce back and forth. But we don't see that in any of the iterations. It usually does just come down to Leo and Raph. And that tells me a lot. And I'm not going to try and pull in all the other characters at the same time, but I just want to make it clear that you mentioned it earlier. There's a certain level of passion that's involved in this because there's a certain level of energy and effort that's required at a bare minimum. If no matter what happens, whether it's you are successful or you're failing, you're going to be the one that takes the brunt of anything that happens. And so... Thankfully, because it's comics, you're going to see the turtles win most of the time. But if there are setbacks, how do you handle that? Raph, to put it mildly, can be a bit of a sore loser to the point that instead of regrouping and, and trying to figure out as a team what to do, it's more like, it's all you guys' fault. I'll go ahead, and I know we'll get to this later. I'll do this on my own. But the point is, it's an opportunity for everyone to grow and learn from mistakes. He's not focused on that. He's just focused on the idea that you guys are with me and I'm the strongest, I'm the best. And therefore, by definition, I have to be the leader. That's something that we see often in, in a lot of areas of life. The idea that because you are the most talented or you have the, the greatest amount of skills or the greatest experience, whatever it is, you are, quote unquote, default the leader. And... Leonardo has a much more nuanced approach, whether he even wanted to be the leader. His point was there is so much more to just the idea of who's the best as opposed to who actually is looking to cooperate with others, who is actually looking to reinforce plans and, and actually integrate other people so that they become the better version of themselves, who is willing to look at potential downsides to attacks instead of going impulsively. All of those things come into play, and Raphael pretty much wants none of it. His point is, is his way or the highway, and he, he doesn't really care about any of the other aspects of it. Thankfully, though, the gap that sometimes Raphael thinks that's there compared to the other turtles isn't nearly as wide as he supposes. So just because he's quote unquote, the best fighter, that doesn't mean he is the best by a mile. He's he's the best of a very elite group. And when you have that, you're going to have people that point out, I can hang with you and I have other areas that you haven't even explored yet. And the more experience that Raphael gets to see that, he's a person that he needs to see it. You can't talk to him about it. You got to be about it. And Leonardo is able to do that. So once he's able to do that over and over and over, that's a situation where you don't have to talk about your respect. You, you've you simply earned it. Well, I, I think it's interesting that you mentioned the idea that, you know, he thinks he's the best fighter because canonically, that's not really historically been the case. Usually the best fighter out of all of them is actually Michelangelo, but he is the least disciplined, which frustrates Shredder, uh, uh, not Shredder, Splinter, because he's like, you are the most physically gifted out of all of them. You could be the, the greatest of all if you would actually just apply yourself. But Mikey is too busy having fun and goofing off, et cetera, et cetera, to take the training seriously. Um, and also that's that notion of who is the best is alluded to in the TMNT film. And it's actually the thing that really is, um, kicks off the fight between Raph and Leo is the argument that they have on the rooftop where Leo's like, you're too rash and impulsive. And also, I'm better than you. And that that's the 
the straw that breaks the camel's back for Raph, when Leo says that, he's like, oh, brother, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one. And Raph ends up actually beating Leo in the fight, is about to deliver a killing blow and then realizes, oh, snap, I'm, I can't do this to my brother. And then he runs away. And so we see that, that hot-headedness and that rivalry also come up in the original live action movie where he goes off and, you know, he wants to go, I forget where it is, what it is that he wants to do, whether he wants to go uh, look, help April or he wants to go find Splinter or something along those lines. And he wants to go off on his own and, and do that by himself. And Leo's like, no, we have a plan. Let's all stick together. And Raph's like, screw that. And he goes on the rooftop and then ends up getting his ass kicked by the Foot Clan. So it's not unheard of for him to do that. And I guess that segues into the next issue, which I know on our list is number three, but I'll bring it up on number two then because I think it segues better. It's his first instinct in a dangerous situation is to go it alone. And that's something that gets him into a lot of trouble as we've seen over the decades that, and as you alluded to, this idea that at the first sign of trouble, it's, well, I'm going to go and fight by myself you know, you can come with me if you want, but I don't want you. I don't want you by my side. I can handle this by myself. I can do it all by myself. It's like he's got a, a chip on his shoulder. He's got something to prove. And I don't know to whom. I don't know who he's trying to prove anything to because his brothers love him. Splinter loves him. He's got a close-knit crew. Who is he trying to impress or who is he trying to prove anything to? So I know I'm not usually the one to say this that often, but... um. I feel personally attacked by this issue. <laughs> so I, I'm i thinking back to, to two specific things in my life. One, I don't know if you'll even remember this, but uh, there was a chemistry class where there was a particular type of problem that we actually like branched out into teams where we were supposed to solve it. And I remember being a part of one of the teams. And for whatever reason, there was a disagreement. And I literally just said... Yeah, I'm going to try to do this myself. Uh, I'll see if I get the same answer as you guys, but uh, I'm out. Because for whatever reason, I just didn't like the the tone or, or, or the way things were going. And I remember our chemistry teacher actually saying afterwards, he didn't call me out, but he had observed it. And he said, like, it's not usually a good idea when something is incredibly difficult. And, and I purposely give a team project to just say that you're going to do it alone. That's one. The other one is when I was a medical... Uh, Wait, was this, Mr. was this Mr. Wood? Well, I wasn't going to give his name, but yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> the other time was when I was a medical student and I was told uh, I had to look up different uh, anti-convulsants, anti-seizure medications. And I was supposed to give a presentation to our attending doctor. And there were residents that were along with us and we're supposed to all learn from each other and all that stuff. And one of the residents was actually training for neurology. So that would be his area. And it was strongly encouraged that I ask him for help. And I thought to myself, well, I can go to the library and look this stuff up myself. It's fine. And then I realized that there were dozens of anti-seizure medications. And I said, oh, well, I don't know how I'm going to present this in, in a quick period of time in just one morning report or something. And I flopped. I did a horrible job. And I remember the resident that was pretty much guiding me the most saying like, dude, you, you, you can't just automatically say, yes, you got it. And then when people think you got it, you, you, you flop like that. When people are offering you help, just take it. Was that a pride thing? Was it a, uh, and, and I didn't have an answer. I don't know why instinctually in certain circumstances, I do have that tendency. So, so when I, you know, when I hear that and I see that and listen to what you're saying, and I've read some of the comics and I certainly have seen just about every iteration of the turtles, I'm like, ah, yeah, yeah, that, that can be painful because the idea is for whatever reason, and I'm not going to go into all the Freudian things about, you know, for some people, it's quote unquote, they're the only child or in this case, have a distance from siblings in terms of age and therefore have a, in, an individualistic experience in life. And they want to continue that even in groups of other people. Uh, for some reason, the idea that you don't want to end up being I don't want to say subservient, but you, you, you want to be self-reliant. You want to show a certain level of independence 
in my case, I'll say it's because I don't want to be a burden to anyone. But in Raph's case, it's more that for his own self-esteem, he constantly just needs this self-reassurance that he is the man. Like he, he really does have everything together. And letting go for just a split second to say that he doesn't or that the idea that someone else would be able to help, quote unquote, help him, that's a sign of weakness. You can't show that. Just can't do it. Anytime you do that, that means that you're giving up a part of yourself. If you give up a part of yourself, then you're going to end up giving up everything. That sounds irrational, but in the moment, it makes perfect sense. Because when are we seeing this most? We're seeing this usually in situations of extreme emotional stress. And that is a common reaction for some human beings. Once again, I feel personally attacked by this. Uh, and so when that happens, it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because now it's not just whether or not you went off alone. If anybody calls you out on it, your point is, well, see, you don't support me. You don't believe in me. You don't trust me. So now I got to put more effort into showing you that I can do this by myself. So it just starts to feed upon itself. It can. It doesn't have to, but it it, it often does. And, and it just creates this spiral, sometimes of isolation even, for anybody. That's, in the long run, not healthy. Huh. I learned a little bit about you just now. <laughs> a little bit more. A little bit more. Even after 25 years of friendship, you still find ways to surprise me. And yet, no. Like, it's one of those things where I guess I didn't know the the depth to which it was. I had some inklings about some things, but very interesting. Yeah, I guess in that in that tight knit group, it's it's hard for him because I guess maybe he's he's trying to find his own identity within the group. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to prove that you know he's the strong one, or he wants to carve out a separate identity in conjunction with the the group dynamic, especially given that as as you said. It is such a small, tight-knit group. It's not a large organization. There's four of them. So it would be very easy to pigeonhole him into something. And and I think that upsets him. So very, very interesting observation. So the last issue that I want to bring up is historically we see he's got somewhat of a slightly contentious friendship with Casey Jones. They're friends and there's a bond there, but there's also some, I don't want to say a rivalry, but there's this notion that almost like a competition of who can kick the most ass and in different ways. And it it's led to some some fights between them. And I thought that was another area that was done very well in the original live action movie is we got to see the two of them sparring. Jose Canseco bat, tell me you didn't pay for this. <laughs> yeah. Cricket. <laughs> cricket. Nobody understands cricket. You gotta know what a crumpet is to understand cricket. I, I could go on and on <laughs> quoting that movie. But talk talk a little bit about that because we've already done Casey. Right. So I think it would be good to sh sort of show the flip side to that relationship. Yeah, absolutely. So when you talk about the idea that you got two guys that really revel in kicking butt, like you said, they have that as a common bond. So you don't have to dig deep to recognize when people connect on a visceral level, then you don't need nearly as much talk and all the talk that's done is is filler for the most part it's it's flavor text <laughs> to put it another way so the closest harmony that they have is when they're fighting either sparring with each other or fighting enemies so how do you keep that going in other words it's not possible to say hey do you want to punch each other in the face over lunch? Do you want to practice grappling holds while we discuss politics? Like there's no there's no analogy. There's, there's nothing ana analogous to what they have at that level. So 
it's going to create some artificial barriers. And no one really knows how to get past that point. And I'm not just talking about them now. I'm talking human beings in general. If you have, I'll give a perfect example. If you have gym buddies, you, you know what you're going to do at the gym. You know how it works. It can be intellectual. You are part of a chess club. You have certain things that you're going to all bond around that's going to be a common point, and that's pretty much what you're going to talk about in that environment. But then when you try and expand outwards, there's naturally going to be situations where in your mind, because we we all naturally do this, we think because we share one major category with other people that almost all the other categories are just going to naturally fall in line. Uh, spoiler alert, that's not the case. So when a person has a different political view than you or likes a different music group than you do or or all these other little nuanced things or major things that you didn't consider outside of that unique environment, it can really floor us. It can really change that dynamic. Someone that you, because of that one bond, you thought was like super tight and so close with you and you're, you know, you're, you're brothers and this is this, this great. And it's, what do you mean we're different? No, I can't tolerate that. I can't I can't handle that. Now I'm the one who's feeling personally attacked. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that's where a lot of it stems from. The idea that I mean, don't get me wrong, they they do have a lot in common. I don't want to make it sound like they're completely different people, but the idea that because they have that one super tight knit area. All of the others naturally are either going to have to grow or they're just going to have to admit that they're, they're just not on the same wavelength all the time. So unfortunately, how do you usually handle conflicts? They're not the ones that usually, quote unquote, talk it out. So when you have one language that you speak and it's very physical, you're going to go back to what you know. So that is always going to create that level of tension. And once again, I know I'm talking about them because they're fighters and all that. But I mean, that once again, that could be anything. I don't care if you're a member of the AV club. I don't care if you're you have any other major topic where you you only relate in that one in that one zone. And when people start splitting off and doing other things. You're going to end up trying to bring it back to that other area that you have commonality with some people will revel in that and they'll say, you know what, this is my silo of of what I'll talk about with you and that's it. Or it'll be a situation where no matter what, that person will come up on your Facebook page and you'll be like, oh man, if we're not, uh, yeah, we're not talking about the club right now. I can't, I can't deal with you, man. So <laughs> that's, that's the best thing I can come up with just, just so that everybody can relate to it. Cause it's kind of hard when you're talking about, you know, kind of a, you know, aggressive sociopath with a lot of weapons and sports and another guy that's a trained ninja warrior that also happens to be a turtle. Yeah, I think it can be difficult sometimes to find something analogous, but I do think that idea of that because you have one common interest that all of your other interests will similarly align, I think that's a fairly common thing. And I think we all collectively fall victim to that at some point or another that we think that, oh, this person we get along with so well here in this sphere, but therefore that that bond is going to spread elsewhere. And I, like I said, I, that's why I feel personally attacked because goodness knows that's happened to me on a number of occasions that because I get along really well with somebody here and then come to find out that we are diametrically opposed politically and or, or another you know, facet of life. And then how do you compartmentalize your relationship? Can you compartmentalize your relationship? Is that something? Not everybody can do that. Some folks can. I struggle with it, to put it mildly. You know, either love all of you or I dislike all of you. It's very hard for me to like pieces of people in certain circumstances and so it's, especially as I've gotten older, it's caused me to rethink some of the relationships and the friendships in my life because of that, because I, I was 
willfully blinding myself to the rest of the situation where we were not compatible just because this one area we were really cool in. And then it's, but is it worth it? You know, that's the question I think we all have to ask ourselves when we're dealing with those types of scenarios in our own personal life is, is it worth it? Are you willing to put up with the other areas of your life that you don't agree where you're incompatible because of the strength of this one area where you are. And again, that's a personal choice. Certainly not for me to make that call for anybody else to say you should or shouldn't continue to associate with whomever, but that can be difficult. And especially if you realize that you can't, that can be painful uh, emotionally and hopefully only emotionally, hopefully not physically, but I mean, it, it potentially can be. Um, that can really mess you up. And I guess Raph and Casey being who they are, they're never really going to talk about that. So it's not going to come up in conversation. As long as they're kicking ass together, it's all good. Nothing else matters at that point. We don't have the luxury. The overwhelming majority of us, I would say, don't have that luxury of saying, listen, we're, we're in this to, you know, we're only in this to survive. Maybe, maybe, folks in the armed forces or, you know, police. That's, that's all that matters. As long as you've got my back and I've got yours, I don't care anything else. So I think that would be something analogous perhaps is soldiers in a, in a squadron or battalion or, or police officers. Well, I think this is as good a spot as any for us to take a short break. Uh, we'll throw in a couple of plugs and we come back, we'll get into treatment. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm one of the high priests of Conchu Ray, and I have the sacred privilege of providing you, the loony listener, with a podcast honoring Marvel's very own Moon Knight. So join me and a host of others at Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or support the show by becoming a Patreon member. Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. It's time to get your Conchu on. I'm Harrison. I'm Jordan. Well, I am Harrison. I'm f***ing Jordan. All right! And we're, we're the, the Grief Rio Podcast. Podcast. Let us be your unnatural Sherpa guides on this existential plane of mountainous game and movie exploration. And don't forget about that spookiness that lives within us all. But mainly in you, you spooky bitch. Oh, damn. I'm offended. We've been voted the best podcast to listen to by many. By many? That means a few. That's more than one. Results may vary. We'll see you on the next episode of Grief Burrito. Yeah! Yeah! Hey, this is Cullen Bunn, and you're listening to Capes on the Couch. Welcome back. So, in-universe treatment. Oof. Would you bring in Casey? Uh, um, I'm going, like, the most dangerous situation here. I know we're not dealing with substances, and I know that's what people usually think of when I'm, with what I'm about to say. He's going to have an intervention. It's not just Casey. It's April. It's it's the rest of the turtles. It's Splinter. You know, it's it's all hands on deck because there is, of course, the risk that he walks out. But the idea that whatever you want to talk about, if it's his anger, if it's his interactions, whatever, having everybody on the same page, that unanimity would... I think help the situation because I don't think he wants to back down from a fight. It's just, this is a different kind of fight for him and he doesn't know the tools. He doesn't know where to go in with that type of circumstance. And I definitely would want Splinter there because I think that would be the one voice that he might be able to uh, understand that maybe there's a different technique. And I know he would, probably just immediately think fighting, but like, no, 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 different technique. What can you do with some of this stuff going on? I'm not there as the therapist. I'm there as the mediator, as, as the moderator of what more than likely would be a very intense discussion. And it doesn't all have to get hashed out in one session or whatever, but I think 
the level of intensity of because sometimes when people, as we said, you know, he has kind of a chip on his shoulder. He he goes alone. If it's just one person saying it, that can be rationalized away. It's that it's just that issue. That one person, I can live my life just not dealing with that person. So be it. If it's everyone that you and, and more importantly, the people that you consider to be allies and are close to you and to a person, they are pointing out that there is something you need to address. Someone like him, that's, uh, that, you know, that's a brick wall that he needs to punch through. And and I think he would rise to that challenge as long as he viewed it as a challenge. If you create it as as some as something that he looks at as as a goal that that needs to be or a hurdle that needs to be jumped over, I think he would do it. If it's more along the lines of this is something that's so foreign to you that you'll never get it or, or like or they or they're talking past him or, or trying to make him sound dumb, then it falls flat. But that's why I'm the mediator there. I, I would try and, and make sure the conversation went in the proper direction. Well, yeah, he's definitely going to shut down if you try. C- certainly, he's going to he's going to rationalize it if it's just one. And he's going to shut down if you talk down to him because you're just going to feed into that that anger and the notion that I'm going to do this alone. But I think he does have a breaking point where he realizes even just again, canonically and historically speaking, that he understands that there's only so much that he can do by himself. And so I think, again, this would require a coordination with everyone before the intervention. But if you get everybody on the same page, you may be able to do that. Interesting. I wasn't entirely I wasn't entirely surprised when you you said intervention and I didn't think substance abuse or what have you. So but that's that's just me. So out of universe then, I think then what we were talking about before the break would potentially be analogous to a soldier, you know, or or a police officer or somebody with anger management issues who has trouble who chafes under leadership and who feels the need to sometimes say, screw it, I'm going to do this by myself. How do you address that while getting them to remain efficient and effective at what it is that they do, but with a cooler head? Well, first I say you're a loose cannon and then you need to turn in your badge. I, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's, that's one of the oldest tropes ever. Uh, no, really what I first, I want to make sure the person feels heard. Uh, often that type of anger may come from a place where either through their experience or their knowledge, they they think that they're being downgraded or, or, or ignored. And that can lead to the anger. If it's a matter of, of just doing that, that can, that can do wonders. Once we're past that point, and, and usually it's pretty quick, uh, it becomes a matter of the person's goals. Are they actually looking to get a promotion? Are they looking to to be higher ranked in the force? In that case, my motivation and discussion with them is, well, what did they say are the criteria? See, and that's the thing. I, I have to make sure the focus is external in that sense, not saying what's wrong with you and what do you need to fix about yourself? It's what is it that you need to accomplish so that you get your goal? That's if it's going that route. If it's more, I don't give a damn about any any ranks or I don't I don't care about promotion. I you know I just want to be me. Then that person may not even have the wherewithal to discuss what it is in terms of emotional anger or have the language to describe why they are experiencing the anger that they're 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 going through or the impulsivity that they're going through. In which case, uh, I, I'm not going to shy away from the medication discussion if. A person, uh, it really just can't even get that language out just yet. I'm going to use usually something like uh, uh, what's called an SSRI, uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Uh, there's plenty of them available. Where the way I've described it to people, everybody's a stick of dynamite. We don't know what's going to make them explode, and therefore, if we can just wet the wick a little bit, if we can just lengthen the fuse a little bit. It'll give that space and that opportunity for the person to start recognizing their emotions before they get to the point of exploding. So you've mentioned had, that on the show before. I you've know, you've I know, used I that know. analogy. Yeah, 
Yeah. And, and, but I haven't used it in a while. And this is one of those where it's, it's really bread and butter, uh, in terms of its its approach, because we're back to that ABC of cognitive behavioral therapy where, OK, we have, you know, whatever the trigger is, we have the result of it, you know, the person going off on their own or whatever. And we're still trying to figure out that middle ground that, you know, that middle point, that middle belief in the ABC category. What is it that you are automatically saying to yourself that's leading to this? And if it's a matter of hate to say it, but. Maybe it is insecurity. Maybe it is the idea that you actually don't have a lot of confidence in yourself and this is the only way you think you can prove it. In which case, well, then it's my job to to reinforce your positive self-worth. If it's more along the lines of the world is an unjust place and I don't I just don't agree with it, then. I'm, it's not my job to show the justice of the world. It, it, my job is to is to point out that even in an unjust world, that doesn't mean that there can't be periods of justice that you can influence in a more positive way than just saying screw it all. <laughs> it, it doesn't have to be that extreme. So there's some variability in terms of what the person's beliefs are. So in those circumstances, this is this is one of those situations where if if we're talking about someone that's on the force still active, I also need to assess just how bad those reactions are. Are we talking? I, I, oh man, are we talking about excessive force? Are we talking about just simply blowing up at your colleagues? Uh, what what level are we talking about here? Because I also have to look at if the person can still be active duty. So. From that standpoint, that that's a very touchy subject too. So I have to have to monitor that. Person may need a leave. May need you may need to to have have some time off. Uh, and and it it blurs the line because on one hand you have confidentiality, on the other hand you have public safety. So anyone that does that on a regular basis, I'm thinking of you, Ben Stover. Godspeed because it is it is amazing work. And it can be very rewarding. So those are some of my thoughts on what I do in uni- uh, out of universe. Well, uh, I'm sure Ben will appreciate the, the shout out and the kudos to him. And uh, we got to get him on the show solo one of these days. Not that there's anything wrong with Hannah and Brittany, but <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get Ben on and uh, we, can, we can tie in... Uh, some of that, some of that stuff. So I, I think the discussion, and I, I don't want to get too timely with it, but I think the discussion around the mental health of public safety officers is very timely right now and is really coming to the forefront. With all of that being said, let us get Raphael on Dr. Issues' couch. <laughs> Hello, Raphael. I'm Dr. Issues. Hey, Doc. So what brings you here today? Oh, Casey said you were good. Huh. For someone who doesn't like to talk all that much, his word-of-mouth recommendations are much appreciated. Well, who else have you seen? Uh, Never mind. Uh, Let's talk about you. Oh, boy, my favorite subject. Do you have any history of emotional symptoms? I don't cry if that's what you're getting at. It doesn't have to be sadness. I mean, there's a wide range of emotions that we all experience. The, they're only problematic if they impair your ability to function or, or impact other people. Oh, I love to impact people hard. <laughs> oh, this one time I had a run and start on a foot soldier and well, I just wanted I, I, to... Well, hey, 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 I, I want to stay on topic, please. Uh, if you hang around Casey, I'm sure you can hold your own in a fight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean by that? What? What, you, you think I just hold my own? You don't think I can win? N- no, that's that's not. Listen, Doc, I'm a master class in kicking ass. Don't even think about trying to new to me. I'm, I'm not. <clears throat> Look, wow, you, you sure are protective of your status. I, I wouldn't dream of questioning your abilities, but let's let's get back to that question about emotions. It, it may not be sadness, but I, I get the sense of uh, anger or pain. Help me understand. The only pain I know is what my opponents get. There's a ton of ways you can gut someone with a sigh. 
Like this one time I had a thug in a chokehold and he was- Hold hold, it, hold it, hold it. Do you always deflect tough questions by bringing it back to violence? Is that all you know? You don't get it. I'm out of here. Whoa, whoa, look, man, is this, this is the one fight you can't afford to lose and you back down just like that? What did you just say? Look, man, I know you can whoop me. Okay, I'm a boxing fan. I'm an MMA fan. I, I don't pretend to know what you know. I, I'm saying though, you're you're fighting your own brain, and that's that's a hard way to go through life. Hard way, hard way. You actually see what people do in the streets. You know what it's like to have the only people that come close to your experience stay in the sewer. I'm supposed to be happy about that. I don't go. Wow, what's wrong with Raph? Boo hoo. No, I got my squad. And even if they don't step up, I got my own back. I need nothing from no one. Well, I'll just say it. It's clearly anger. Oh, jackpot, hot shot. But you said if it impairs me, do I sound impaired to you? Huh? I have to think carefully how I put this. I'll just spit it out. Anybody walk on eggshells around you? Who cares? Well, I bet you they do. You ever ask your squad how they feel? Not really. They ever piss you off? All the time. And what do you do? I go blow off some steam. I need that time by myself. They ever go after you? If they need me, but they know better than to test me when I'm dead. Why am I even telling you this? It's just a thing that people do around me. Uh, Does anyone ever tell you that you're appreciated? They don't need to. That... Wasn't the question. Sure. And what's your response? This ain't finishing school, Doc. Please and thank you only go so far. I've heard about Splinter. Would he agree with your statement? Yeah. No. No, he wouldn't. Why you got to hit me with stuff like that? What is all this, whatever it is, what is it supposed to do? It's supposed to get you to funnel rage as needed. Instead of burning out like a streaking comet, you'll be a long-lasting star shining in the night sky. Actually, comets are fairly eternal themselves. You know, uh, Donnie told me once that most celestial bodies have been around longer than living organisms. Whoa, so there is some brains behind that brawn. Who said there wasn't? Uh, uh, Look, man, no offense, man. I'm saying you're a multi-threat... Dang, can we sand down that chip on your shoulder? Only if you keep me a lean green shell kicking machine. Oh, I don't think that'll be an issue. Then we'll get along just fine. See you next time, Doc. Well, that wasn't as much of a shell acting as I thought you would take. Oh, you're the one with puns now. Okay. I got jokes. Yeah, yeah, good for you. All right, all right. You really think you're better than me now, huh? Okay. Oh, that. Oh, that's what we're going to do? That's how we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> Didn't we just have this discussion? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And um, We literally spent an hour talking about it. Yeah, I, I swear I will try and get better. I promise. I promise. That's I... okay, man. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> uh, so recommended reading is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Body Count. Uh, This is actually one of the most adult stories in the Ninja Turtle canon. Uh, It's it's an original Mirage story. Basically, the long and the short of it is that Raphael and Casey Jones team up to kick 17 different kinds of ass. So we'll have links to it in the show notes. We'll see if it's available on trade uh, or on Comixology. So that's going to about wrap it up for this week. Next episodes, uh, Support Systems in Comics character redacted our big surprise character that we're working on and then brian our present level patron and good friend of the show although i'm questioning how good of a friend he is then don't create silos we just had this discussion he wants us to do eeyore i just he's not a comic book character but he but is doc, a doc. he is a literary character. That's stretching it a little bit. But I'm saying, just as a character, I love it. Oh bother! <laughs> so we'll do Eeyore for for you, Brian. So 
as uh, as we said at the top of the show, we've got a Patreon. Again, thank you to our brand new patron, Amy. We're, we're right chuffed to have a new patron, especially one from, from across the pond. So, so you can go to patreon.com slash capes on the couch and you can subscribe for one, three or five dollars and get some additional content, some cool swag. You can also go to our T public site if you would like to get some additional merchandise. We've got our logo as well as our why because comics. And if you go to tpublic.com and do a search for Capes on the Couch today, on the 24th, the day this episode is released, on the 24th through the 26th, our store is up to 35% off, $13 tees, $30 hoodies, $20 phone cases, and more. So you can go to tpublic.com slash user slash Capes on the Couch. We'll have links in the show notes as well to our merch site. And uh, hopefully one of these days we'll overhaul the website and we can just say like, hey, go to capesonthecouch.live slash merch. And there it is. But we're not there yet. I don't have the time for WordPress. You can find us on all the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Capes on the Couch. We have a Discord server, which is growing ever so steadily by the by the day, by the week. Uh, slowly but surely, you can go to tinyurl.com slash Capes Discord, capital C, capital D, uh, to join our fan community where you can listen to us as we record our live streamed episodes. We're also on YouTube and our Facebook pages as well. Thank you, Get Vocal, for sharing those links. And I think that about covers all of the social media. So, Doc, anything you want to say before we head out? When you see someone usually raging out to others out loud, you realize that they're often spending the rest of the time suffering in silence. I guess since I had the pun, you had to get serious on us. I appreciate it. And it is the truth. So for Doc Issues, I'm Anthony Sitko. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next week. Capes on the Couch podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Dr. Issues is a psychiatrist, but he is not your psychiatrist and does not have knowledge of your individual situation. For any personal mental health concerns, please consult your own health care providers. For medical emergencies, please call 911 or the designated number in your area immediately. Remember that you are not alone and help is out there.